Hi, my name is Anna Trong, and I'm with Henrico Recreation and Parks Department, and I want to welcome you today to our Snowflake Hangers activity. This is an activity that requires very little supplies, just a little bit of creativity, and you come up with something beautiful. So today we're going to start with supplies. Like I said, not a lot, but I'll tell you a little bit of what you're going to need. And first of all, making snowflake hangers, you're going to need hangers. Plastic hangers of any sort, any variety, any shape, any size. You're going to need zip ties. And I'll talk a little bit more about those as well. Scissors. That's really all you need. Hangers, zip ties, and scissors. Some optional items include a glue gun, hot glue gun with glue, and some decorations to add to it if you want to jazz it up a little bit. But otherwise, not much. And I'm going to show you some ways to get started, how you can really use that creativity to generate beautiful decorations, large decorations that you can hang in your home, hang on your fence, in your trees, decorate all over your yard and inside if you'd like. And one great thing about this, it's not just holiday season, it's all winter long. So let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, your first supply is going to be hangers. You can buy these for a dollar a pack. You can buy them in lots. You can buy them online. You can get them anywhere. And they're really inexpensive. I think I paid a little over a dollar for 10. And you can get them in various colors. You can find them in different designs. Some of them have like a little a J on the bottom here. So all that does is add to your decoration, add to your creativity. So I've got my zip ties as well. These are eight inch zip ties and I found them actually to be a little long for my needs. I really could have used a six or maybe even a four inch zip tie. Um, no difference there. And it all just depends on how you want to finish it out. And I'll tell you a little bit about that as we get close to the end. Then I have scissors to cut the end of the zip tie once you've connected them all together. So I'm going to get started with our hangers. And I'm going to show you just one design to kind of get you started. And know that it's up to you. And as many people have said before, every snowflake is different and unique. So you can make yours like that too. And know that also when you're trying to put it together, sometimes it's just not gonna work the way you want it and that's okay too. But these hangers, just in just by turning them in direct, a different direction can create a hugely different effect. So I'm gonna show you one way to make a snowflake and then we're gonna make a second one too. So looking at the way this hanger is shaped, you can lay them different directions. You can lay them with the hook side up, the hook side down. You can cross them over. And so what I'm going to do with this one to start is I'm going to cross them over and just create kind of a, a rectangle almost between the two. And I'm going to take a second set and do the same thing. Just lay them across each other going in the opposite direction. And you'll notice after you start getting going that you might have a little hole in the center and that's okay. That's like the center of the snowflake. Also, one thing that you can take into consideration is how these little hooks, which direction they're flowing. I did one one way and I did one the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it so that all my little hooks are aimed out this time. Now that's something you can take into consideration. You can look at it and think, oh, I like it or I don't. And again, my hooks are going in. I'm going to flip them over. And you're just going to play with it. And what I've done here is pull them kind of all together so that my hooks are connected. And when you go to zip tie, you're going to decide if you like it this way, you could flip it over and see what it looks like with the hooks down. I can do that real quick and you can just see the difference in how it looks and then decide what you like better. So 
So just a little different point of view. You got to work with it a little bit and kind of tweak it here and there just to make sure everything's in place and going to work for you. Like I said, pulling it together. I found that I have the biggest problem trying to get my center to work. Just doesn't really work for me, but that's okay. So you can see the difference in what it looks like with the hooks in. I think I liked it better with the hooks out. So I would flip it over and then I would think about where I'm going to connect those zip ties, especially at the hooks. That's a good spot. If you can get around the outer edge and then come around the inner edge as best you can, that works really well. These hangers might create a bit of an obstacle because they're really thick. They have a wide space right here. So if you can connect them close to the center, that helps to keep it so it's not as wobbly. If you can connect maybe two edges together and that might require a longer zip tie. So that's where the idea comes in that maybe you could use smaller zip ties in certain areas, a longer zip tie maybe towards the center just because they're thicker at that place. But this is one, one, uh, one possibility for a snowflake. And that only requires eight hangers. So I'm going to go into another design and I'm going to show you the hanger. We're going to make the one behind me here. Again, very simple, not complicated at all. While I was putting this together, my son came in and said, wow, that looks really complicated. Ha ha, I fooled him. And those are the kind of projects I love. Very simple, very easy, but packs a big punch. People don't know that you didn't try hard for days to create it just takes a few minutes. For this hanger behind me, I used 16 hangers. So I took two and I put them kind of bottom to bottom. And let's see, I have so that the hangers are facing upwards. Just kind of gives you that little point to the snowflake. And I've got Again, bottom to bottom, creating kind of a point. <laughs> and all my hooks are kind of touching and coming together. So that right there is eight hangers. So what I'm going to do is add a second layer of hangers. It's going to be the same design, maybe, we'll see, but it's just going to add a layer to give you an idea of dimension and depth. I think that's what adding a second layer does. So I have my hangers bottom to bottom by overlapping them so that you're not repeating them, you're not seeing the same design, you're just turning it a little bit clockwise somewhat, you get a little different decoration there. Now I'm going to flip it so you can see how the hooks are pointed out on the bottom layer and they're pointed in on the top layer. And I kind of like that idea, so I think I'm going to go with that one. So this one again, bottom to bottom with hooks aiming in. I'm going to lay that there, bottom to bottom with hooks singing in. And sometimes this works on your uh, logical mind, trying to get the angles in all the right directions. Some of these patterns took me a minute to really twist my head around. So there you can see how simple it is, but really packs a punch. Gives you a lot of dimension and just design that when you look at it, you can't really even tell that it's a hanger, but when you look close, you realize that's a hanger. And the good part about it is by the time you're done, you'll never even know that it's a hanger. It's just gonna look like a snowflake. So now I've got my zip ties. Again, these are eight inch zip ties. And I'm gonna go around and I'm going to tie the outer edge first. 
And what I did with these is I went ahead and I zip tied all the way through the four pieces of hanger into one place. Now you can decide if that's where you think it's going to be best connected or you can do double. You can do one on the bottom, one on the top layer. But by putting them all together, it's going to hold them in place so that they don't fall apart. And if you've ever used a zip tie, you know there's one direction that it goes in. You have a flat side and a bumpy side, so you want it to flip it until you get it just right. And when you go and you hear the zip, so satisfying. Uh, this time around, I'm just going to go around and do each of these. I'm not going to pull them real tight yet because, like I said, sometimes they kind of wiggle around on you and you want to make sure you're in the right place and you got it all the way you want. So we're going to go around and do eight of these. You don't want it so loose that they actually come apart. So you want to try and make sure that they are not going to slide out on you. And you can kind of see how you look at towards the ends that they are really long on the end and that's what I mean by I really didn't need eight inch but I was still learning myself and I figured I'm just gonna go ahead and use a packet that I have rather than go buy all new ones but that would be my advice to you these zip ties can come in like I said earlier hangers come in different colors zip ties can come in different colors too so if you want to um, buy uh, black hangers, there are black zip ties. Or if you want to think about even painting your hangers, you can do that too. To create seasonal effects or things like springtime. It doesn't necessarily have to be a snowflake, it could maybe be a flower. Uh, so you could change it up based on what you want to make. So now I've got my outer edge. Let me pull those a little tighter so they don't slide out on me. Now I'm going to think about doing the inner edge. And like I stated earlier, these are really thick. So it's going to be difficult to connect all the way through. So what I think I'm going to do is, hmm, I think I'm going to connect the top two to start with. And how should I do that? Let me take a look at that and see what I did. Okay. Do the top two here. And if you think like that's not enough, you can go back and do more. And then I did the bottom two here. So you actually are connecting all of them just alternately somewhat. And I learned a little bit about zip ties that they were actually created in 1958 by a company that was trying to find a way to connect airplane cords. And originally they were made out of metal and that today you can buy all kinds of different zip ties. You can buy them so that they break apart easily. Um, you can buy them long, you can buy them small, you can buy them um, plastic, you can still buy them metal. So you have all different options as far as zip ties. And a lot of people I know have them already in their garage, so you might be able to just go find a, Oops, that one I guess went in backwards. Find some in your stash. If you don't have zip ties, you could probably just use string. Pull them together. I think I've got all my zip ties in order there. If you think you need more, go ahead and add more. I think I might add a couple here just to give it some reinforcement. And try that. What that's going to do is while it's hanging up, it's going to make a difference. Because I found also while it's hanging, sometimes it wants to bend in on itself. And if you have a spot where you're hanging it outside and it's really windy or anything like that, it might be harder for it to actually stay as a flat snowflake. 
it might fold over and look like a taco snowflake. I don't know. Which wouldn't be bad. I like tacos. All right, we're getting close to being everything done here. So we actually are using 24 zip ties through this. That's just going to secure it better, especially if it's outside. If it's inside and maybe laying flat against a wall, it's not going to wiggle around so much. But here we go. I think it's in a good shape. If you think you're going to have issues, this is where your optional glue gun comes in. You can maybe glue the center pieces together, and maybe that would help. But if I just go around and tighten them all, I know I'm, I've got them where I want them. Get those last little zips in there. them up real good looking good here go around the outer edge this is where you need your scissors all you do is just go around and start clipping off any excess See what it looks like. We're just finishing it up here. Pull my zip ties out so you can see what it looks like. And there you have it. We have a lovely snowflake. These I think would be great gifts even. Probably cost you under $5 to make one. And when you buy supplies, you can actually make multiples. So that works really great. Now, just as you see it plain here, you can also add some decoration to it. And that's what you see behind me as well. But I just took some greenery out of my, my Christmas stash. And I'm just gonna lay it on there so you can see what it looks like. But what you could do is just weave it in and out. Maybe if you wanted a zip tie or a little string, you could tie it in there. Or you could add some snow, other snowflakes to it. I've just got some snowflake decorations. Again, a pack for a dollar. And you, this is where your hot glue comes in. You can just hot glue them straight to it. And you've got a lovely snowflake. So here is the one way to make it. I'm gonna show you some examples of other designs. So if you would like patterns to kind of look at, uh, that'll help guide you through making some variations of this snowflake. So you can see in this slide, the ones that are connected one and two, that's layer one and then layer two. The others are independent and are just a single layer. So that gives you a little bit of options to create your own design and your own snowflakes to have a lot of fun this, this winter or throughout the year. So I thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a good time. If you have any other interest in following our projects and activities and programs, be sure to check us out at henrico.us slash rec or subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's so many good things to see on there. If you haven't done it yet, you're really missing out. So check all those other good activities out too. Thanks again. Enjoy.